Hello, within this part we'll focus on event flags. Uh, we'll start from STM32CubeMX and uh, our Cube IDE. This is my case. I'll create a new project with an existing workspace. So file new in the STM32 project. I'm using Nucleo L476 RG board and this is why I'm selecting the micro L476 RG. And uh, the name of the project would be 7 underscore event underscore flux. I press finished. You can reuse any of uh, previous exercises because in this exercise we would need only three tasks with equal priority and one interrupt. In our case, as we are using the Nucleo board, it will be blue button connected to pin PC13. There is uh, no configuration of freer to as a part of the tasks, uh, so all components related to event flags uh, we need to specify uh, manually within the coding part. So starting our exercise, I would uh, first declare PC13 as external interrupt. Okay, we can we can specify its label as well. So it is a blue button. Please remember that the labels are defined within main.h file later on after we generate the project. What is important uh, is to select uh, the debug interface. So within the system and core and sys group, I'm selecting as a debug trace asynchronous SW to have this serial single wire viewer or serial uh, wire output. Uh, pin and I'm changing the time based source from default sysstick to timer 6. This time based source is used uh, by the HAL library to define all the timeouts and delays, and it should not be the same like let's say the timer used by the operating system, in this, which is the sysstick in this case. Okay, so from hardware point of view at this moment, that's all. Let's continue with freer toys. So I go to middlewares. Freer to us, I select interface CMC's V2, and then uh, from um, let's say the configuration, I go directly to tasks and queues, and uh, I will change the default task into the task one. So I double click on its name, and within this window, I just rename it to task one priority normal i would keep it i would change the stack size for this to 256 words and um, then the entry function it would be start task uh, one and that's it then uh, i would add two more tasks task two would be used uh, within the first part of the exercise task three would be used a bit later on okay so task two task to the same priority level so normal uh, 256 start task to as an entry function that's it and task free the same priority so normal 256 words and start task free as an entry function and what is what would be the role of those of those uh, three components you can see it on the slides but let me repeat uh, so task one will wait for an external interrupt in our case this is our blue button connected to pc13 and uh, it will wait uh, for task two action in order to let's say perform further actions so in order to perform an action within task one we need to do something within task two and press a button it will in fact give to let's say event uh, event flags which would unblock our task one task two we will set one within event group which we will use uh, here or uh, let's say event flags and uh, the next part of this uh, event group or event flags would be given by our interrupt which is used within blue button Task 3 we will use later on just to demonstrate that uh, some combination of the flags uh, uh, can be reused by more than one tasks at the moment. Okay, so we've got uh, three tasks. Uh, let's uh, continue with the configuration of the free RTOS because as we can see, 
hip size is uh, let's say too small, the declared one. Uh, so within config parameters, I need to change it to 4000 bytes. And the second point, uh, just to verify, library max syscall, inter syscall interrupt priority is set to 5. I will come back to NVIC configuration, so interrupt configuration, and uh, I would first enable the interrupt from our blue button, and then I need to specify its priority to the level which is in the range uh, from this max syscall to the uh, lowest possible priority level, so from 5 to 15. This is due to the fact that uh, this interrupt will be used to execute uh, operating system functions and uh, to protect the complete system it is uh, strongly recommended that all of the interrupts which are using operating system functions should be should have the priority uh, within those boundaries so from max syscall to a minimum possible priority so between 5 and 15 in our case okay this is all for this uh, part so i will generate the code Clicking, for example, this icon, and we should have our main.c file opened. If not, we can open it from core and src. This is this one. I would like to mention one thing which is quite important. Even if we have not uh, put uh, any, any configuration concerning event flags, those are automatically added to our middleware uh, library and uh, all of the functions we right now use are stored within this file event underscore group dot c and uh, its header file event underscore groups dot h file. Of course we'll use CMC's OS version too so the porting functions are uh, within this folder and uh, are stored within CMC's underscore OS 2.c file. Okay, let's continue with code uh, processing uh, then. So I just opened main.c file. Uh, it is located within core, src, and uh, main.c. Uh, so as I told you, the, there is no configuration of event uh, flags or event groups of an cube ID or cube mix. So we need to declare everything manually. So we'll start with uh, the private variables of this object. And um, as uh, usual, we will start with some handler. So this component is called uh, event flux. So the beginning of the let's say type def would be the same. Then there is id underscore t. And uh, I would name the variable of this type uh, event uh, groups. Event group one. Okay, so this is a um, declaration of the handler. Then we need to create it. And a good place for this is, for example, this one. So event group one is equal to OS event uh, flags, as it is, let's say, name within CMC's OS. And um, I would not use any arguments so I just put null and that's it so our event flags object is created its name is event group one okay before we continue I would just add one function which is our interface between our OS and uh, the console it is using uh, ITM interface to let's say to send the data from the tasks and the interrupts into the console uh, so this function is task action accepting one argument and it can be of course implemented a different way using for example uart i would locate it within this part to be sure that it will be it will be not removed and during regeneration of the project as i'm using itm interface i would start from itm then send control space no proposal so send char there is a functions like function like this then i need to pass one argument and then in the second line i would just to send a sign of new line okay so this is our task action 
and then we need to let's say fill our task tasks uh, functions body so as i as i told you at the beginning task one would be the task uh, which would wait for some specific combination of the event flags uh, it will be 51 hexadecimal and uh, part of those flags would be set by task two and part of those would be set within the external interrupt uh, callback so we will start from this uh, function waiting for the flags so os event flag Control space um, wait. This group is even the group and the flux. Flux is 51 hexadecimal. And uh, options. Concerning options, I would come back to the declaration of the function and I need a definition. So I would go to middleware, third parties, free RTOS, source, and CMC source v2 and this file cmc source 2.c file and within this uh, function i need this field this flux this flux means that um, we will wait for all of the flux specified within this wait function so this is something which we are interested in we don't we don't uh, want to have either one or 50 for example but 51 hexadecimal timeout will specify as os wait forever Okay, and then after this we will give sign of life, one, and uh, that's it. As we are waiting for the flux, there is no need to put this task additionally in the blocked state. Please remember that this OS flux wait function is sending this task to the blocked state till all of the, let's say, flux specified here would be set within this object, even the group one. Okay, so now let's continue with task two. Uh, within task two, we'll set part of the flux. So OS event flux control space set. And again, it will be event group one and the flux. In this case, it will be only one. The rest one would be set uh, from the interrupt routine. Then we are giving sign of life. So task action two. And we are sending this task for three seconds, for example, to the block state. We are not modifying task free at the moment. We will do it uh, in next step of our exercise. So at the moment, uh, we are setting part of the flux within ta task two, and we need to add the remaining part, so 50 hexadecimal, because those flux would be ORed within interrupt routine. So we'll switch to stm32l4xx-it.c file, which contains the interrupt routines, active ones. And I would need to find this external interrupt handler for external interrupts uh, from line 10 to 15. I will go to this declaration. I can see that my flags are cleared, so I don't need to take care of them. And then after this, there is a callback call. This callback is defined a bit below as a weak so I can just copy paste it and reuse it in my code. So it will be called within uh, this external interrupt routine. So I will use uh, again this user code for section for this. And within this I would set, just copy paste, we'll just set the remaining part of the event crew event flux. Uh, so it will be 50 hexadecimal and uh, my sign of life would be exclamation mark. Okay, let's uh, build it and let's check whether everything is working. I can see no errors, no warnings. So now it is a time to start a debug session. My board is already connected, so I'm clicking on this bug icon. Then on the debugger tab, I need to enable this serial wire viewer, which is used to send the data over ITM interface. I need to change the core clock to 4 MHz, which is the case in, let's say, our exercises, because this SWV is clocked with the system clock. Then apply and OK. OK, uh, next we need to configure and start, uh, let's say, the ITM data console. I've got already this tab, but in case you do not have it, please go to the quick access over here. 
press SWV and select this line with the monitor icon. After this, we need to configure it. So we've got this uh, icon. We need to set this zero channel, which is this SWO line, PB3. And we need to start tracing. After this, I can start the complete application. I can see that once per three seconds, I would see some activity on task two. Now I would uh, try to, and task two is sending uh, one within the event flags. So task one cannot be unblocked because it is waiting for 51 hexadecimal. So um, I will try to add this missing 50 because um, the event group or event flags uh, is oring together the things uh, uh, which are setting something to the selected event group or event flag. So if I press the button, I can see that uh, there is a sign of life from the interrupt. This is this exclamation mark. And I can see immediately task one, which is woken up. If I would press again the button, I can see the same action. If I would press more frequently, I can see a lot of interrupts, but still only one, uh, let's say, execution of this task one. This is due to the fact that there is no accumulation of the flags. So even I try to set this event flags many times, if it will be not taken, uh, so absorbed by, let's say, uh, the task one, which is waiting it for, for it, it cannot be accumulated anywhere. Uh, so it is not like, for example, counting se uh, semaphores. So as you can see, it is quite nicely working. In the next step, uh, we will check whether it is possible to wake up or activate more than one tasks on the same event flux uh, object. So thank you for watching this video and uh, let's continue with uh, with more extended exercise. Okay, let's uh, continue with our, let's say, experiment on event flux. So I stop debug session and within our main.c file, I would add some code within task free entry function. So what I would just do, I will copy paste the code from task one but I would change this to free. So we will have at the moment two tasks, task one and task three, waiting for the combination of, uh, let's say, two different, let's say, event uh, event flags. So in total is 51. And uh, those event flags are set from task one and from interrupt. So let's now compile the code and start a debug session. Okay, there is no additional configuration because we already did it. I would just show this data console. Configuration should be already done. I start tracing and start an application. So again, once per three seconds, I can see, let's say, the activity of task two. If I press the button, I can see that uh, there is an exclamation mark coming from the interrupt routine. And then I can see the activation of both tasks, task one and task three. And the second interrupt and again uh, activation of both tasks. So as you can see uh, using um, the let's say the combination of task flags we can unblock more than one event which is not the case when we are using for example semaphores. So it can be better mechanism to synchronize to unblock multiple tasks on multiple events. So this is a very, very effective communication channel, which can be used in more extended operating system based applications. Okay, that's all for this uh, part. Uh, thank you for watching this video.